It's so quiet out here. No way. <laughs> That's hilarious. It was still quiet, but that little sound impulse of hush ammo was enough for that limb to give up the ghost. That's pretty weird. Because this is super quiet. Wow, that that really is like suppressed 22 quiet. That's crazy. <laughs> Cycled the whole mag, locked back. Oh, <laughs> I was hoping for that. Wasn't so sure it was gonna cycle with the buffer weight that I have in here, but that shot super smooth, super quiet. Love it. Love this combination. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. It's hard to believe that this table was covered in seven inches of snow and it was 14 degrees right here just two days ago. But that's the nature of North Carolina winters for you. And it didn't stop me from enjoying the Guard 9 that CMMG sent me at my request. I realize it's just been a couple months since I did a video on a Guard 45, and here I am doing another video on what is essentially the same gun, just tuned for a different caliber. <laughs> but it was an easy decision for me to ask CMMG to send me one because I had so many viewers asking me when they were gonna offer the Guard a nine millimeter. Plus, I really like the way the Guard shoots. CMMG sent me the CAC Shockwave version called the PSB, which I think stands for pistol shockwave blade and that's right it is a pistol it is not a pistol caliber carbine that said this ar pistol with shockwave blade is very much like my guard 45 sbr in that it shoots like a fun-sized ar-15 but there's a whole lot more to its design that makes it an excellent silencer host and one of the softest shooting pistol caliber ARs on the market, which is why the CMMG Guard 9 is what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. If you've seen my recent video on the Guard 45, the specs of the Guard 9 will be familiar to you as it's the same gun tuned to fire 9mm Luger. And yes, just like the Guard 45, the Guard 9 takes Glock mags, like the 33 rounder in the pistol right now. I did say pistol because this variant is configured with a shockwave receiver extension and blade arm stabilizer instead of a buttstock. That means it's classified as a pistol and not subject to NFA regulations despite its 8 inch barrel. Made of 4140 chrome molly steel, the 1 in 10 inch twist barrel comes comes threaded one half by 36 with an A2 style flash hider installed from the factory. I spun that off immediately so I could attach my rugged suppressor's Obsidian 45. The lower is billet 7075T6 aluminum, whereas the upper is forged from the same material. The attached seven inch key mod handguard gives plenty of length to grab or mount accessories. All three are black anodized as a standard finish, though for $150 more, you can get your choice of several different Cerakote colors like the bronze seen here. Mags are released by a large cantilever paddle right where you'd find the mag release on an AR. A standard AR-15 safety selector controls a mil-spec AR-15 trigger, so you can swap them out with your favorite aftermarket parts if desired. The charging handle is also mil-spec, so I swapped it out with a BCM Mod 3, which has a nice extended latch for shooting with gloves. The guard's functional forward assist hints at the design feature making it unique among AR-style pistol caliber carbines. It's radial delayed blowback action. This animation shows how a straight blowback action works in a rimfire pistol. Straight blowback pistol caliber airs work the same way with the main exception being that the firing pin is striking the rim of these 22 cartridges, hence the term rimfire. Whereas in a 9mm, the firing pin would be striking the primer in the center of the cartridge, hence the term centerfire. When the powder ignites inside the cartridge, expanding gases push out in all directions. This sends the bullet down the barrel while pushing the case rearward with equal force. And here's the crazy part of a straight 
straight blowback action. The instant the bullet starts to move forward, the bolt in a straight blowback action pulls away from the chamber, leaving only the expanded case to keep a seal for the gases to push the bullet down the barrel. And that seal doesn't last long at all. Once the case head clears the barrel, the remaining pressure in the barrel is free to blow into the action and out the ejection port. This is not such a good thing for noise at the shooter's ears, especially when shooting suppressed. Plus, it accelerates the very fouling of the action that causes the straight blowback system to malfunction. On top of that, it often results in a very sharp recoil impulse that can outrun a magazine's ability to keep up. Typically, that recoil impulse is managed by adding weight to the bolt and installing a stiffer recoil spring. Those solutions can create their own problems that can affect how smoothly a gun will cycle. This animation shows how the guard's radio delayed blowback system works. When a cartridge ignites, the bullet starts heading down the barrel while the case is pushed rearward just like with a straight blowback action, except the chamfer lugs on the guard's bolt keep the action closed until it fully rotates and clears the lugs in the barrel extension. The whole time it's unlocking, the lugs on the bolt are transferring recoil forces to the lugs in the barrel extension, while also vectoring some of those forces into camming the bolt carrier rearward. By the time the guard's action has fully unlocked, pressure in the barrel has dropped considerably, so the bolt carrier has less recoil force to deal with and less gas ends up being dumped into the action and out of the ejection port. As cool as that animation was, I do want to try to show you the same thing with actual guard parts. You can see the chamfer lugs on the guard's bolt, and you can see the square lugs on the guard's barrel extension, which by the way is a standard AR-15 barrel extension. Before I do that, I want to point out two things. First of all, the firing pin in the guard is actually buffered to reduce the chance of slam fires, but that buffer spring actually puts forward pressure on the bolt and it makes it a little springy when the bolt carrier group is outside of the receiver. It's not something you would notice in cycling, but it is something that gets in the way of me being able to show you how the bolt works. So I just took this out for the purpose of this demonstration. The second thing to note is this part right here that looks like a gas key with a cutout for the cam pin. It's not a gas key. This is not a direct impingement system. It's a blowback system, but the gas key in an AR-15 also acts as a tiller for the bolt carrier, keeping it aligned as it cycles. And that's all that part is doing. It's acting as a tiller for the guard's bolt carrier as it cycles through a standard AR-15 upper receiver. Here's how everything lines up when the bolt is closed. You can see the cam pin is all the way at the rear. The lugs of the bolt are lined up with the lugs of the barrel extension. When a cartridge is fired, the case pushes into the face of the bolt. Just like with a straight blowback system, the bolt moves rearward. It's allowed to do so because those chamfers slide past the lugs in the barrel extension. And as they're sliding past the lugs, the bolt is forced to rotate. As the bolt rotates, it forces the bolt carrier to move to the rear. Those forces between the lugs of the bolt and the lugs of the barrel extension absorb recoil. Those forces between the cam pin and the cam pin slot of the bolt carrier absorb recoil. So that by the time everything unlocks and the lugs are lined up with the spaces between the lugs on the barrel extension, there's less recoil for the guard's bolt carrier group to manage. That little bit of delay, momentary as it is, also means that the pressure inside the barrel pushing against the case has dropped considerably before everything opens up and whatever gas is left is free to blow past the bolt into the action and out the ejection port. It also means that the bolt carrier group on the guard can be lighter and manage the same total recoil forces as a heavier bolt on a straight blowback action. Though the guard's blowback is delayed, it's still a blowback action, which means it's still prone to being sensitive to the amount of pressure being generated by the ammo being fired. The guard can run a wide variety of ammo with a standard bolt carrier, but it will be a bit sharp with higher pressure ammo like supersonic rounds loaded for defense, especially when suppressed. You can slow the bolt impulse by adding weight to it just like with a straight blowback AR. And CMMG offers an action tuning kit for that. It says Mark 45, G, Mark G45, but it's the same kit for the 9mm. I have the medium weight, you can see sticking out right here, 
in the carrier right now and I found that this works really well for subsonic suppressed shooting. For supersonic suppressed shooting I found that this, this larger weight works best. If you're not going to run suppressed and you're, you're just wanting to soften kind of range loads that smaller weight might be what you use. That said, regardless of how much weight you add to smooth out the action, you're still going to end up with less reciprocating mass with the guard's radial delayed blowback system than you would to achieve the same bolt speed with a straight blowback system. That's good for the gun and it's good for the shooter. My ranges are covered in snow. There's no place to go. But that doesn't matter because this setup right here with subsonic ammunition is absolutely backyard quiet and the radial delay blowback action has no small part in it unlike a straight blowback design which opens up as soon as the bullet starts moving down the barrel the radial delayed blowback action stays closed until the gases in the barrel drop considerably that means there's less gas less noise coming out of the ejection port and more of it is going through my obsidian, giving it a chance to muffle it. It makes it quieter to me and quieter to my neighbors as well. The Guard 9's 8-inch barrel means that some ammo sold as subsonic will go supersonic since most quoted 9mm ammo velocities are measured from a 4 or 5-inch barrel. This is seen in both the Spear Lawman and Golda 147 grain loads. Whoa. And try one more. It might be too loud for shooting here. Yep, that's too loud. Yep, too loud for backyard shooting. <laughs> Cycle though. <laughs> the Freedom Munitions 165 grain hush ammo was still subsonic out of the guard and still rimfire quiet. That hush, 165 grain is something else. Super quiet, very soft shooting. Had no problems with it, locked back. Love it. Fioki's 158 grain loan was designed to be subsonic from some machine guns, so it's no surprise it sounds great out of the guard. Didn't have any problems with the Fiocchi. It's a little bit harder hitting, and so it's a little bit louder than the Hush, but still what I would consider backyard quiet, unlike the Spear 147 grain Lawman training load <laughs> or the Gold Dot. The Gold Dot was definitely quiet enough for shooting for home defense or whatever without Ear Pro, but for now I'm gonna stick with shooting the Hush and the Fiocchi. Even at one tenth regular speed, the slow motion footage that I can record is still not slow enough to catch the radio delay in action. But it does show how little pressure is released through the ejection port with each shot. In a straight blowback action, you typically see quite a blast of oil, carbon, and smoke out of the ejection port. But the guard's radio delay knocks that down to a gentle puff. Less pressure means less noise and will likely result in less fouling of the action when shooting suppressed than you'd see from a straight blowback AR. At the time I'm releasing this video, <laughs> the ATF has determined that there's nothing about shouldering a pistol that magically turns it into an SBR. So there's nothing about shouldering this blade that's currently unlawful. Note that that determination has changed twice already. So if you're watching this video months after, years after I put it up, it'd be a good idea to see what the ATF thinks about it at that time. Note that nothing has changed about putting a vertical foregrip on a pistol. You're not supposed to do it, which is why I've got just a small finger stop here from IWC. Helps me to index my hand on the forend, and mainly it keeps me from sliding my hand too far forward and grabbing a hot silencer. <laughs> know that I don't care how you set up your pistol or how you use it. I think the laws that I'm talking about 
are stupid, but I still think it's a good idea for you to know what they are so that you can make an informed decision knowing the consequences of non-compliance. Meanwhile, I am gonna continue shouldering this blade like I have been doing for a very long time. I'm shooting with the Trigicon Mini ACOG, but this one has the ACSS reticle in it from Primary Arms. And I'm doing it mainly to begin my familiarization with it before I do a full feature video on the optic itself. What I'm seeing is that there's nothing about all those different subtensions in the ACSS reticle to get in the way of shooting up close. I just put the chevron where I want the bullet to go, pull the trigger, and send it. It would be interesting to know where the subtensions line up as far as yardages go with a 25 yard zero for the chevron. Of course, that would vary on the velocity of the different rounds that I would be shooting. But my main takeaway is that there's nothing about the ACSS reticle shooting up close that makes it different than the other reticles that are available in the ACOG or even just a regular red dot. MSRP for the GAR 9 starts at just under $1,300 with street prices likely to stabilize a couple hundred dollars below that. That'll still put the guard price well above a lot of popular straight blowback action ARs on the market today, but there are a few reasons for that. The higher cost of the guard is in part due to the higher manufacturing costs over a straight blowback system. It also includes the six figures CMMG spent developing the radial delayed blowback action, a cost not spent by manufacturers of straight blowback action ARs. So if you just want a pistol caliber AR to have fun with on the range, there are quite a few good choices in straight blowback actions. In fact, you could even save a couple hundred dollars by going with CMMG's own original Mark 9, a straight blowback action 9mm AR. However, if you're looking for a quieter host for your suppressor, if you're looking for a softer shooting pistol caliber carbine, if you're looking for what might turn out to be a more reliable pistol caliber AR, then you're gonna have to spend a little bit more to get the guard. If you wanna learn more about the guard 9 or 45, be sure to click the link in the video description below. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You could see the links right here. Be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.